I thought it was wonderful. I read the passage in Matthew about going to Galilee, and you probably thought of it too. Jesus uh, said that when they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Then said Jesus unto them, this was the women, you know, uh, be not afraid, go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me. Now, I thought that was wonderful. Tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me. Then in John 21, they're in Galilee and uh, they're back fishing. The last word spoken in any of the gospels, because John was the last written, literally the last written, the last word spoken to the apostle Peter is the, is the, are the words, follow me. In Greek, I think it's one word. Follow me. That's the last words he said. And that is exactly the first words he spoke. Mark is the first gospel, according to the scholars. So Mark was written first. John Mark, I told you how that it, that it supported Paul's preaching in Rome. He was there. Uh, Paul called for him. Now, after he said, repent and be baptized, that's for everyone. Everyone who will hear. But the very next words he says to those that, that, uh, who are interested in, who do that, but who are interested in him, his very next words to Simon and Andrew are, follow me. So the first words he spoke to his disciples and the last words he spoke to his disciples, see the whole, it's for everybody to repent, really. It's for everybody really to follow. But people can't hardly get in hearing range unless they repent to hear follow. So the first words he spoke to his disciples were follow me. That's in the gospels. It's Mark, the first written. The last word he spoke to Peter was follow me. I think that's wonderful, don't you? And Brother Helm said today, he said something very profound, but it answers a lot of questions. People teach that we have to sin more or less every day in thought, word, and deed. He said, there's one thing wrong with that. Jesus, when you're following him, he never leads anybody into sin. He said, son, Jesus never leads anyone into sin. He never leads anybody into sin. So the only way you can get back into sin is not follow Jesus. But if you follow Jesus, he'll lead you always into righteousness. He'll lead us always. It's, it's, it's if we neglect to follow him that we get into sin. He was explaining John 15, which very few people preach on. And John 15 says, that if we, it says, if the branch doesn't bring fruits, purge, cut off. He's explaining that. <laughs> now, isn't that something? I thought it was wonderful. I said, I never heard it in my life. Did you ever hear anybody say, Jesus doesn't, Jesus, well, you know Jesus never leads anybody into sin. You find anywhere in Scripture that Jesus leads anyone into sin? No. Lead anybody into sin? Well, when we follow him, it's always in the will of God. It's always holy and it's always righteous. The only way in the world you can go that way, get off to the right or the left, is get your eyes off of him. Isn't that something? That's the way we do it. I thought it was wonderful. Now, he said something else to me over the phone. He was so excited. He said, he said uh, Pastor Rod and Pastor Dave helped him so much this morning. He said, I tell you, you it, it was as if, do you get that kind of help every Sunday? Yes, sir, I get that kind of help every Sunday. But I tell you, he was thrilled over what the light that was coming from David and Rodney. You know what it's like because you watch him more than I do from down there. But he said something else to me. Now, listen to this. I, I can't repeat it right. Uh, and he's not coming here, so I'm not taking away something he's going to say. Probably write this in a letter. But let me think if I can think of it. Oh, the man who is following Jesus never buys a ticket to Tarshish. The man who is following Jesus always buys the ticket to Nineveh. Always. 
I thought it was wonderful. He said, but this, listen to this. He said, the man, that means the person, the person, the person who is following self never buys the ticket to Nineveh. The self-assertive heart will never go to Nineveh. I never, I, he said never. Will always go to Tarshish. What's oh, a shock? He said, see, and nearly all persons are self-assertive. They'll always choose their own way and it never chooses Nineveh. The heart will never choose Nineveh. Not unless that heart's in self-denial and that heart's purged and that heart loves Christ. Then that heart will choose what Jesus wants. But, the, but that'll take self-denial. Do it. So you can see the self-assertive heart will never choose Nineveh. Never. But the person following Jesus will always choose Nineveh because that's the choice of Jesus. Nineveh will be symbolic here uh, for the place where he wants a witness made. He wants to help some people. You see, I think it's tremendous, don't you? Why? Why it's profound. And it answers a lot of questions. See, that's how important our moment by moment walk. Been, have you been walking moment by moment? Have you, have you kept all your essentials? I'm saying this not in a rebuking way. I'm saying it in an encouraging way. I can see that the person who doesn't keep the essential cannot follow Jesus every moment of the day. Now, if he doesn't, that foot gets off. It'll get off there somewhere. So you've got to have strength. We've got to have strength. Because if we look over the wall, it can be no more than a glance. Well, it's got to be back. To, see, you've got to be in the spirit. You've got to be up to refuse what the world has to offer. So the essentials will do that. See, read, pray, witness, obey. I don't know that everyone can do like me. I know, no, you can't. But I heard the tape 80. What is today? June what? 20 what? 22, okay. I heard the tape 82 times a day and I was so tired when I went home. I, I was so worn out that I couldn't even receive a cup of coffee. But I could get the earphones in my ears and push one punch and lie there and pray and try to get comfortable because I ache so bad. But what was I trying to do? I'm trying, I figure that even if just beginning to seep, and I figure that if water drips on a rock, rock long enough, the rock will give away after a while. Well, our history tells us that. That's why we've got rocks that break. <laughs> so I figure drip, drip, drip. Even if I fall asleep, even if I wake back up, even if I, whatever, just let her drip. Conscious, subconscious, just let her drip. 